Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to improve your vertical jump and specifically what the science and the research around vertical jump says. We're gonna start by talking about the basic science involved in vertical jump. We're gonna move on to what the science says about how to load and what type of resistance training is effective for improving vertical jump. We'll talk about plyometric training and what volume of plyometric training is effective as well as which plyometric exercises are effective. And then lastly, we'll move into exercise selection. So which exercises actually decrease your vertical jump versus which exercises are most effective at improving your vertical jump. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. So to start off, it's really important to understand that when we're doing a vertical jump and we're dipping down and then jumping, that's a counter movement. And when we sink down, we're putting our muscles on stretch. So about half of the force involved in jumping upward is from the elastic and the neuromuscular component of the muscle spindles stretching and then shortening. So that's called the stretch shortening cycle and it contributes about half of the force to vertical jump. The other half of the force comes from the active muscular components like the muscles actually shortening. This can be demonstrated by doing a static vertical jump versus a counter movement vertical jump. If you just squat down about halfway, hold for three seconds so that there's no stretch reflex and then you jump, your vertical jump will be roughly half of what it is if you dip and then jump. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the average vertical jump for a female being around 10 to 16 inches, for a male being around 15 to 22 inches for college athletes. And if you wanna be on the high end of this or even push yourself beyond that, we have to take specific training measures to make sure that we're maximizing the adaptations of both the stretch shortening cycle as well as the active contractile components that are contributing to vertical jump. All right, so let's start off by talking about resistance training and how to load to maximize vertical jump. Now, it's really important to understand that a lot of research studies confirm doing resistance training year round is very effective for improving vertical jump. This is especially true in basketball players and volleyball players and building and maintaining strength over the long term is really, really important. And in terms of resistance training, we have two extremes where people are making mistakes and not improving their vertical jump. On one extreme, we have people who are training like bodybuilders and they're doing long eccentrics and bodybuilding style training where they're always training with high volume and not necessarily moving fast. We know based on the research that extended eccentrics greater than five to six seconds will actually decrease our vertical jump. If we're primarily training with these really long eccentric movements, we're not training that stretch shortening cycle and we're not gonna see improvements to vertical jump. Similarly, doing a lot of balance or instability exercises can actually increase our antagonist coactivation and reduce the amount of power that we can output because our muscles are firing on both sides of the joint in this checks and balances system and that's not allowing for explosive concentric focused power. Of course, we can incorporate some balance exercises and some eccentric exercises. For example, Nordic hamstring curls are great for hamstring strength and tendon strength. And there's a lot of benefit to like ankle stability exercises. We just wanna make sure that that's only making up a portion of our program and not our entire program. On the other extreme, we have people who are doing too much on the plyometric and power side and not enough strength-based training. Power and plyometric training is very effective and we're gonna go through the research on that next, but we need to understand that that's very transient in terms of the adaptations. That means that if we do power training and plyometric training, we're in the short term gonna improve our vertical jump fairly well, and it might lead us to thinking that we're getting really good adaptations from this program, but those don't last if you don't have a base of strength. If you only have one month to improve your vertical jump, it's probably gonna be most effective to do most of your training, power and plyometric, moving the bar fast or jumping with dumbbells, doing these fast power-based exercises. However, after about a month of training that, you're gonna plateau. And if you don't have blocks of strength or even hypertrophy work, you're not gonna see further increases in vertical jump. A better system for most athletes is gonna be spending some time building hypertrophy, maybe a month or a block of training, then some time building strength. So for example, if we have four months to train, we might do one month of hypertrophy, one month of strength, followed by one month of strength slash power, followed by one month of power and plyometric specific training where we're really peaking our performance then. Training this way where we build up from hypertrophy, strength, strength slash power, and power is gonna build us up to a peak and we're gonna build a base and then we're gonna peak on top of that. 
If instead we were to just do four months of power training, we would get good adaptations for about a month or so, and then we would probably plateau and even decline by the fourth month. And you would be wondering, what's going wrong because I'm doing all the right exercises. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. We need a really strong base of strength and then we need phases of power training to actually peak. If you guys are interested in seeing a vertical jump program and how I would actually structure this, leave a comment below and subscribe because I might do a follow up video covering that. All right, so now let's say that you took that advice, you spent two months of your preseason doing strength and strength slash power and building that base but now you're getting towards your season, you're in that peaking phase, and you're wondering what type of plyometric should I be doing, what volume of plyometric should I be doing to now peak. This meta-analysis that covered many studies showed that plyometric training can increase vertical jump by about five to nine percent. And this is in the average person. You might actually respond greater or lesser than this average group. The volume of plyometrics that is optimal depends on your baseline, so what you're already adapted to. If you're just starting out and you're a beginner, typically we want less than around 100 jumps. So maybe 50 to 100 total jumps in a workout, one to three times a week as you're just starting out. As a really basic example, that might be 20 vertical jumps, 10 broad jumps, and then 20 foot contacts of power skips as one training session. If you're just starting out, this is a really good introduction to plyometric training and you'll start to build that stretch shortening cycle up. Over time, as we become more advanced, we want to progress that and for advanced athletes, an optimal volume is probably somewhere around 120 to 140 foot contacts per training session and then up to two to four times per week. Really important though, we don't want to start with those advanced guidelines because if we just jump right into that, we have increased risk of injury and decreased effectiveness because your body won't be able to respond to that volume of training. It's way better to actually build up over time and then you won't hit a plateau. So if, for example, three months before your season, you started with that beginner volume, you were at 50 to 100 foot contacts per training session, three months out, and then you built up, so that way peaking now this last month, we're gonna say you're at 120 to 140 contacts, what types of exercises should those be? Of course, this will be different for everyone based on your sport and your experience and the equipment that you have, but here's an eight week example from one research study. So what you can see here is they actually started at fairly low volume week one with about 50 vertical jumps, three sets of 30 meters of bounding, and then just one set of 15 meters of broad jumping. So this week one protocol would be more in that like beginner type volume. And then by the end of this eight weeks, you can actually see that the participants in this research study progressed fairly fast to 17 sets of 10, which is 170 vertical jumps, four sets of 30 meters of broad jumping, and then eight sets of 10 depth jumps. This is actually more volume than I would typically recommend, but I think some things to point out here is that they have a vertical jumping movement, a broad jump movement, which is more of a horizontal, and then a depth jump, which is a reaction or a uh, fast stretch shortening cycle exercise, which is good because it puts the stress on a little bit different muscle groups and movement patterns, so that way you're not only doing vertical jumping and you're incorporating in different directions. Personally, in a program that I would build, I would work in some lateral jumps as well, especially if you're training for overall athleticism for maybe a field sport like basketball or volleyball, or you're just trying to be comprehensive in your athleticism. With this research protocol, the participants did see about an average of a 5% increase in vertical jump over eight weeks, which is pretty solid. I think potentially with a more gradual buildup over three months, this would have been even more effective. It's just hard for research studies to go longer than two months due to participants dropping out. I wanna also talk a little bit about exercise selection here and which exercises are gonna be most effective. And this is actually really hard to determine because there are literally hundreds and thousands of research studies with different groups and different outcomes. But there are some trends that we see. And for example, over many studies, the counter movement jump actually seemed to have the greatest effect size of many of the exercises measured. This is likely due to the fact that the counter movement jump is utilizing that stretch shortening cycle where we're stretching and shortening very quickly to do a counter movement versus, for example, a static jump, which is only going to train the active component of that muscle. From a resistance training standpoint, some other research points towards half squats being really effective in a group of U17 basketball players. And that's an exercise that I've seen applied to track and field athletes and other athletes who need vertical jump. 
No one actually wants to do it because you look like you're ego lifting in the gym, but if you can get over that and just load pretty heavy for a half squat, you can actually get really effective results because it's very joint angle specific to the movement pattern of the vertical jump. In your hypertrophy and strength phases, when you're just building a base, you really can't go wrong with just a comprehensive set of lower body exercises, doing movements like squats, hinges, and lunges. You can apply these broadly. It can be barbell back squats, front squats, leg press, split squats, Bulgarian split squat. All of those exercises are gonna be really effective for building your strength base. Then in terms of like joint angle specificity and using the stretch shortening cycle, you're gonna start shifting towards that as you approach your peaking phase. If you guys wanna see any follow-up videos on this content, go ahead and leave a comment below and subscribe so you don't miss those. If this video has been helpful for you, go ahead and smash the like button. Also follow along on Instagram at The Movement System where I'll be posting more information about strength and conditioning and training. If you guys wanna learn more, or check out my blogs and other free resources, you can head to themovementsystem.com where I have book recommendations, a free program download template, and other resources for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.